Her will now present another unique display of delightfully dexterous humanship. What am I talking about? Go ahead, Willie. Kick off your trick, bud. Ah! Hmm. A cigarette that leaps like a goat and smells likewise. And now, my friends, here comes the tapper. This time, Willie Moscone will shoot his cue ball down this table and off the small matchbook. He will sail over to the other table and pocket each of six object balls, each ball going in a different direction and into a different pocket. Yes, I'm wondering if he can do it too. In slow motion, with a camera on the ball all the time. Each ball to a different pocket, yes? Yes, a two-table shot to end all two-table shots. Goodbye now. In one of the poorer Philadelphia neighborhoods lived Joe Moscone. Living quarters was his place of business, the year 1923. Whenever Joe was out, his son Willie practiced on the pocket billiards table instead of on the violin. The cues and balls were all locked up, but that didn't stop little Willie. While other boys were playing marbles and baseball, this kid worked out with a sawed-off broomstick and a few Irish potatoes. And for a six-year-old, he wasn't bad. One day, while Willie was in the midst of sacred practice, the youngster had an accident. Uh-oh. And then the next moment, of course, it was Papa Moscone. Though Willie was doing a good job of hiding that rip he'd made, Pop was boiling. Time after time, he told that kid to keep away from the tables. But when he saw this, well, what could he do? With that kind of ambition to master the game, how could he stop the little guy? And then, yow, that did it. No more pocket billiards for Willie, ever. And the punishment was not entirely verbal. A few days later, Tony, a regular Moscone customer, was brushing up on his game. He was a good guy, but he didn't like kibitzes, especially small kibitzes. Yep, to an expert like Tony, this didn't sit so well. But then, if his pop caught him in here again, Willie wouldn't sit so well either. Small Fry was definitely on a big, fat spot. Imagine this bambino trying to show Tony what to do. Little did he know it, but here was the shot that would either send him back to his violin practice or start him on his way to become a world-famous cumin. Mamma mia! He made it! So Tony got excited. And when Tony got excited, well, that was it. You just had to listen. Even the scolding Moscone had to pause under his attack. It wasn't long before Papa Joe's window ballyhooed the boy wonder. The clever kid's cumanship brought bucks to a family that could well use them. Soon, Willie began to play in local tournaments. Hour after hour, he practiced, practiced, practiced. He loved the game. It was his life. As he grew older, his achievements were reported in sports sections more and more often. He seldom lost. His many amazing victories in other cities over men of much greater experience spread his fame to all parts of the country. Handsome Willie Moscone became the swooner type. Here, cocky and confident, he was playing against the great Charles Seaback. Contrary to appearances, this was a most vital tournament in Willie's career. As feminine hearts fluttered, Moscone felt sure of victory. Seaback needed 117 points to win. Willie needed only 26. 
A miss caused by careless grandstanding gave Seaback his chance, and Moscone lost a mighty important tournament. But Willie kept trying for the big time, and finally, one day, got a crack at the world's championship, and lost. Moscone had learned his lessons the hard way, yet he couldn't cop the crown. For six years, he competed in world championship contests, but for one reason or another, hard luck hounded him every time, just when it looked like he had the title in his grasp. In 1941 came another bid to play for the championship, but after his many flops, Willie was ready to quit and look for a job. After all, he was a married man now, and a baby was on the way. Should he give it just one more try? Heads yes, tails no. Yes, this was it, the championship, or the want ads for Willie. After many, many hours of grueling competition, Willie Moscone had battled his way to the finals. He had hit his stride. Playing as he had never played before, he was pitted against the world champion and three-time winner of the title, Andrew Ponzi. Here was one of the real greats of his day, the craftiest player in the game. Moscone's hard luck had left him. He was sinking them right-handed and sinking them left-handed. The fans knew it was Willie's day and that he never felt more confident in his life. And Willie kept going. His shots were clean and sure. He piled up points. and finally missed with a score. Moscone, 85. Ponzi, nothing. And then Willie read the big news. So did the old gal behind him. What a time to get a message like this. <laughs> and Willie only 40 points away from the world's championship. No wonder the gossip spread like an old girdle. And the contender for the title? Well, gosh, that baby was three weeks early. In the mind of this first-time prospective papa, anything could happen. Yep, and he began seeing things. That eight ball looked three times as big as the pocket. So, he missed. Ouch, and how? A scratch. In a case like this, it can happen to the best. With the passing of silent, tense minutes, the great Ponzi had rallied. Once again, Willie had been close to the championship, but as in preceding years, it looked like close wasn't good enough. Finally, as the nerve-wracking contest drew to a close, Moscamp needed only one point to win and put Willie Moscone out of the game forever. Here, once again, was a shot that could decide Willie's future. What? The ball didn't go into the pocket. A miss. And now, an easy shot to the score. That was it, but he'd sewn himself up. The next shot was a mighty tough one. Here, Willie would have to make this ball hit this ball, but that ball was in his way. Yep, it looked like Andrew Ponzi had Moscone in the bag. Willie would try it this way, hitting five cushions. In order to reach the object ball and hitting that ball just right to put it into this pocket. One stroke of the cue could make Willie Moscone the world champion. Under pressure? Who wouldn't be? What with becoming a papa any minute, plus a five cushion shot that could make his lifelong dream come true? Why, what's this? Oh no, he wasn't nervous. Well, good news, yep. In fact, for Willie Moscone, it was the best possible news that could come to him at this particular moment. 
It's A, B, O, Y. So, that was one hurdle. And now, that shot. One, two, three, four, five cushions, and that's it. After a long uphill battle, Willie Moscone won the world's championship, a feat he was to repeat many times in years to come. Goodbye now. <laughs>
Motorcycles airborne in Massachusetts. This is the sport of motocross, born and nurtured in Europe, imported now to America, complete with the world's most expert riders, Belgians, Swedes, and Englishmen. You'll see them today in this international motocross championship in Pepperell, Massachusetts. Contrast that with the quiet tension of a billiards room at the Sahara Hotel in Las Vegas. There, Luther Wimpy Lassiter will meet Houston's Jack Bright in the final match of the U.S. Open Pocket Billiards Championship. The tension of billiards and the wild beauty of motorcycles, today on ABC's Wide World of Sports. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport. The thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Brought to you by Sears Die Hard Battery. With extra starting power to start your car when most batteries won't. By John Hancock Insurance Company. The growing and changing life insurance company for your growing and changing life. And by the Shell Oil Company, makers of Super Shell, the gasoline for good mileage. Super Shell in the clean white pump, wherever you see the sign. There used to be a time when you'd said pool hall, billiard room, you thought of blue smoke and haze and all that kind of stuff. Not anymore. No, sir. Today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, you're going to see professionals at work, skilled men, craftsmen in their trade. I'm Keith Jackson. Let me introduce you to one of the premier craftsmen of his trade, 15-time world champion, Willie Moscone. And Willie, we're going to see a couple of great ones today, and the crowd still remembers and loves you. Thank you very much, Keith. Yes, we are. These boys that are playing tonight are both skilled players, great players. And it's just a matter of who gets the breaks, in my opinion. This is the fourth U.S. Open Championship sanctioned by the Billiard Congress of America. And these are the principles in tonight's championship match. A young man who has not won a major championship yet. He is from Houston, Texas. He's big, he's strong, he's young. His name is Jack Bright. He's very good. In a sense, I think I can say that he is the challenger because he is pitted tonight against one of the great ones. They know him as Wimpy. We call him Luther Lassiter. He is from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. He is a former winner of the U.S. Open, and he's played everywhere against everybody. Gentlemen, if you are ready, proceed with your lap. Willie, I think right now we should get the definition of the game we're going to see. Well, this is what they call lagging for the break. You know, they roll up and down the table, and the one that comes closest to the cushion has the option of breaking the ball or forcing his opponent to break. In this case, Bright won, and he chose Mr. Lassiter to start the game. They'll play to 150 points. The winner will go home with $5,000. Well, the object here, uh, he, the, the, the fellow that breaks the balls must drive two balls with a cushion plus his cue ball. Let's see if he does it. And immediately you see strategy. Yes. Well, he drove to the cushion so the safety is allowed. Now, Jack Bright, the 220-pounder from Houston, Texas, who has never won a major billiard championship. Goes to work, and he's got a lot of green on his first shot. Five ball in the corner pocket, and Jack Bright is on the board. It's 1-0, 150-point game. There will be a lot of anxiety, a lot of nerves, and a lot of tedium between the first point and the 150th point. Two ball in the corner. Jack Bright, 2 nothing. And this is the spot where, when you're engaged in the game, you, you, you're nervous, right at the beginning. 
You hear in the background the referee, Al Koslowski. And it's up to the player. He must call the ball that he is going to try to sink. One ball. There's the one ball called. Well, looks like he has him uh, spread enough so that he can make a ball and go in and, uh, and uh, scatter the pack a little bit. Get the balls open, in other words. Jack Bright, you'll note, has the nervous habit. He really Three works ball. on that chalk. Three ball on the corner. Five-nothing, Jack Bright. Notice the action he had on the cue ball. He stopped it right on the spot to set up the next shot. Now, Willie, position for the next shot must never escape your mind when you are making a shot. It's always that next shot, or maybe two or three in advance that you're thinking of. Now, here, I would say that he's thinking about scattering those five balls that are together, five or six balls in a cluster. He's got to get them open. So that means he's got to get on... on uh, on an angle so he can make a ball and go in and, and scatter them. Four ball. Calls the four. And he drills it into the corner. Seven nothing. Jack Bright. Fifteen ball. Fifteen ball in the side pocket. Notice the position as he draws the cue ball back. Yeah, well now it looks like he can make the ball and go into the pack and open him a little bit. And Wimpy Lassiter waiting his turn. Patience is a great ally in this game. Nine. Nine nothing, Jack Bright. Those balls are not, not opening too well for Bright. Seven ball. As you can see, those balls are still clustered there. He's got to get them open. He did it. He made a very nice shot there. Sahara Hotel, big crowd, very quiet. I would guess that those two balls over on the cushion will be his, one of them will be his break ball, and the other one will be the one he, he try to get position on to get position on the break. He sinks the eight ball to make it 11 to nothing. Jack Bright leads. Wimpy Lassiter yet to shoot. Ten ball in the side pocket. Twelve ball. He's gonna... He has to go to the bottom cushion and come up on the side rail. He get a beautiful the... shot. Look at... No. He's gonna scratch. Oh, that's too bad. He... Twelve, one scratch, score eleven. Oh, that can be a little unsettling because... Uh, it looked like he had a fine shot and good position.